You all go up the hill and you see an old windmill that probably hasn't worked for decades. Oh goody, I'm really excited to meet the caretakers of this fine orphanage we've been hearing so much about. I, I don't think it's an orphanage. Those pastries they were selling were rather suspect. You all go into this orphanage and find three kind old ladies gathered around a cook pot. You don't see any children. Old ladies? This sounds a little bit suspicious. What else comes in threes? Well, according to the corporate handbook on adventuring, hags often come in threes. They're referred to as covens. Well, I wonder what these wonderful fine hags are doing with all of the children oh, then. Fat Cat knows. He tried some of the pastries. So, <laughs> what would you all like to do? Hold on a second. Th this all really sounds pretty familiar. Haven't have we done this before? No, but chapter six of the corporate handbook on horror contains a scenario quite similar to this one. Wait, wait, but, but what does that mean? It means, you dunce, that our illustrious dungeon master is stealing content from modules for use in his homebrew campaign. And according to chapter 12 of the corporate handbook on ethics in gaming, that's cheating, and our dungeon master oh, should be disbarred. A dungeon master can be disbarred? Now hold on, you guys. I'm I'm just doing my best to run this bi-weekly game for you all, okay? Do you have any idea how hard it is to create homebrew adventures week after week? Do, do you have any idea the amount of pressure that I'm under? No excuse. You're the DM. You're supposed to be perfect. That's correct. If you actually graduated from Dungeon Master School, like you said, you really should have your act together. And here all this time, I thought you were experienced and knew what you were doing. Now hold on just a minute, you guys. Stop being mean to our Dungeon Master and stop judging him. I don't remember any of you guys volunteering to be the Dungeon Master and run the game. In fact, when our Dungeon Master wanted to take a break and have somebody else run the game, you all wussed out and I had to be the Dungeon Master. And, and, and we all know how badly that turned out. So you all just need to shut your mouths and be nice to our Dungeon Master. Barbarian, thank you. You, my good sir, are level 20 now. <laughs> what a suck up! Welcome to the DM Layer. I'm Luke Hart, and I've been a Dungeon Master since high school. On this channel, I give practical Dungeon Master advice that you can implement at your game table. Today in Layer, we're gonna be discussing five ways you can adapt and use pre-made adventure modules, such as Curse of Strahd or Rhyme of the Frost Maiden, for your homebrew D&D games. Doing this is perfect for new Dungeon Masters who may not want to run a module, but also don't feel ready to homebrew their own adventures quite yet either. This is also a way for veteran Dungeon Masters to take a bit of a break from homebrewing, which can get burdened and time consuming after a while. Remember too that if you have questions about this topic or any others, I have live streams over on Twitch every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, link below where you can follow me and get notified when I go live. I also wanna take a hot second to thank all my awesome patrons who support all the free content I create for the D&D community. This month, I'd like to give a big shout out to Emmy, Abby C, and Stephen H. Thank you so much for your generosity. I really do appreciate it. And now on to five ways to adapt pre-made adventure modules for homebrew games. Number one, cherry pick individual adventures from different modules for your homebrew. This, by the way, is my absolute favorite way to use modules. All right, let's say that the PC party is level six. I browse through various modules here and look at adventures designed for level six. And so let's say that I find three adventures in these modules that I really like. I then will create a plot hook for each of the adventures and I give those three plot hooks to my players. And then my players can choose which adventure they're most interested in and would like to do next. And if you're running an Acquisitions Incorporated style game or using group patrons as detailed in the Eberron setting or Tasha's Cauldron of Everything, you can present the plot hooks as contracts even given by home office or by their group patron. And this is exactly what I do for my Youngling campaign. They are running an Acquisitions Incorporated style Style campaign, so I present them with three plot hooks based on adventures that I find in modules, and then they choose which one they want to do next. And then which, whichever one they choose, that's the adventure that I go off and prepare. And this works amazingly well. It lowers my prep time because I'm, made, I'm using a pre-made adventure, and it gives them a choice of which adventure they want to go on as well, helping to give them a feeling of freedom in doing what they are most interested in doing. And they, they have no idea what I'm doing. 
doing cherry picking from different modules. At least I don't think they do. And just to clarify, if you're using this method, um, when you pick those three adventures, you don't go and prep every single one of them so that you're ready for whichever way they choose. No, you have your players tell you which one they want to do, and then that's the adventure that you go and prepare for them. But just because you're using a pre-made adventure from a module doesn't mean that you have to stick to exactly how it's written. Feel free to change things in that adventure so that it fits better with your group and their style of play. For instance, if your group favors a certain style of play, such as combat, social interaction, or exploration, then feel free to tweak a little bit and make more of their style of play featured in that adventure. You can also add traps, reoccurring NPCs, customize it to fit certain things that are going on in your campaign, in your game. And of course, tweak and change monsters if needed as well. You, you can change whatever you want about the adventure that you pick from the module. You don't have to stick to how it's written. But the key to this whole system working well and reducing the amount of prep that you have to do is that once your players choose the adventure they're gonna go on next, they stick with their choice. If, if they pick one thing and you go off and prep it and then they're just like, uh, actually, well, then, then you gotta prep another one. Like, the whole idea of reducing your amount of prep time is kind of out the window if your players don't stick with their choice. So I would feel that you should uh, enforce that and be like, hey guys, you know, you said you wanted to do this. I prepped it. Like, could we just go ahead and play it? And, and I feel like reasonable players who understand the amount of work that goes into DMing should and would honor that. Number two, run the module as your main campaign arc, but create homebrew character arcs too. All right, so we're running Tomb of Annihilation. We're going to play through the module and we're gonna follow the plot lines in it. We're gonna follow pretty much everything mostly in the module itself and everything. However, as we run it, I'm going to tweak things as desired so that the module fits in with my group's style of play and tweak things as I wish. However, I want to change things as a dungeon master to help me express myself creatively or whatever, or just do cool things that I think are cool. But one of the limitations of modules is that, well, there's nothing in them based on your character's backstories and other interesting things that they might want to do as part of the game. And so that is where you get rid of the module and you homebrew little side quests, mini adventures that your players can go on that are based on their backstories that are or, or things that they just personally have an interest in doing in the game. And these are called character arcs. They allow you to create cool adventures and moments in your game that appeal to individual characters because they are drawn from things in their backstories. In my experience, I have found that players love these sorts of adventures. And a character arc could and should, in my opinion, be an adventure that the entire group goes on. For instance, let's say that Krindar's long lost sister has reappeared, is up to no good, theoretically, and the party has to stop her from doing horrible things. Again, theoretically. Just in case one of my players is listening right now. Or Elidin's former thieves guild is back in town and seeking revenge. They also coincidentally happen to have a hostage that is his former love and thus the group needs to go on an adventure to resolve this entire conflict. Or instead of an actual full-blown adventure, it could just be a series of encounters that happen from time to time as the group is going about doing other things in the game. For instance, two revenants, Krindar's brothers whom he personally killed, come looking for revenge and the entire party must battle them. So, so you run the module, but then you sprinkle these homebrew adventures and encounters based off character backstories into the game as well. So what this does for you is it gives you the firm foundation of a professionally made module, but also the freedom to exercise your creativity as you create homebrew stuff that appeals on a personal level to your players. And a little note here on um, leveling up and experience points, it could get a little bit messy because you're adding more adventures and encounters to the module. So the group could begin to level a little bit too fast and outpace the challenge of the module. So what you could consider doing is making the character arcs a little bit shorter, perhaps just taking one game session so that they don't affect leveling too much. Or you could just pull out adventures from the module that you don't like and you just don't run them. Or if you're extremely clever, you can find a way to turn an adventure from the module into a character arc, incorporating some backstory elements into it. Number three, run a module homebrew mix. Let's say that I'm going to run Curse of Strahd for my players, but I also like homebrew. So I do both. I, I might mostly follow the plot arc of the module, but I frequently step in and change things to suit my personal tastes and those of my players. For example, the 
the town of Valaki is kind of a hot flaming mess to run, so if you don't like that part of the module and the quest to retrieve the bones and all that kind of stuff, then you could just throw it out. Instead, you homebrew an adventure that you, the dungeon master, are excited about, and you have maybe the burgomaster of Valaki or Lady Watcher give the players the quest, or, or maybe the raven people do it. And then you can also take elements from the module and use them in your homebrew. For example, you might have Isaac and Victor use their powers and magic to create to create these humanoid monstrosities that are terrorizing the town, and, and then the players have to resolve that issue. And then you can also make your own homebrew encounters as the players are traveling or exploring the areas of Barovia. Like, you don't have to stick to the random encounter tables that are in Curse of Strahd. There are lots of cool monsters in books like Morning Canaan's Tome of Foes and Volo's Guide to Monsters or just the Monster Manual that you could throw in there and make probably a lot more interesting than that little bitty random encounter table in the module itself. You can also create full-blown adventures for the group to go on. Who's to say that there isn't an evil necromancer somewhere in Barovia that needs to be dealt with? Remember, the module is a guideline. As the dungeon master, you can change it however you want. Number four, run a mostly homebrew campaign, but steal from modules. I did this during my Sword Coast Guard campaign. It was mostly homebrew with adventures that I made myself, but every so often I grabbed a pre-made adventure from a module and used it. For instance, I grabbed Against the Giants from Tales from the Yawning Portal. Well, the Hill Giant part and the Frost Giant part, and we ran them mostly as is. But the thing is that we kind of didn't like the, the, the Hill Giant part and the Frost Giant parts of Against the Giants from the module, so uh, when we came to the Fire Giant part, I just threw out what the module said about that. I homebrewed my entire Fire Giant uh, adventure myself, and it was, it was a lot better. Of course I'm gonna say it was better. Like, oh, I homebrewed it myself and it was horrible. Yeah, I would never say that. Even if it were true, I would probably still lie. I would never lie about something like that. Now, in my Against the Giants example above, I was mostly running the adventures as is. But at one point in the campaign, I did something a little bit different. I took the map and a couple encounters from a pre-made adventure, but I homebrewed all of the other contents. For instance, there was an encounter with ghouls in pools of water, where they would come up out of the pools of water, tie ropes that were attached to rocks to the character's ankles and try to push them into these pools of water. I thought that was pretty cool, and so I kept that part of the adventure. The, the ghouls were fabulously unsuccessful at getting that to work, though, I must add. And everything else I gutted from that adventure, and I replaced with my own storyline, encounters, treasure, etc. And a middle ground here might be to keep the map and other elements in the adventure, but to homebrew the crap out of any parts of the adventure that you want to to suit your own tastes, removing bits and pieces as desired. Basically, Basically, you keep the framework, but you rearrange and change as needed to fit your campaign and your players' tastes. Number five, use the module as inspiration for your homebrew. In this scenario, you want to homebrew your own campaign and adventures, but you just don't know where to start. So take the main plotline of the module, the main idea, and maybe even the main villains. Use that as inspiration for your own homebrew to get you started down the right path. Or, or any path. So let, let's pretend that I really like the idea of Curse of Strahd, but I really don't want to run the entire module, or I'd just rather homebrew my own adventures. So I create a demiplane where players can become trapped. There's a village there, there's some adventures, and there's a vampire ruling over it all. So I steal the main idea, but I plan on homebrewing everything myself. And then if while I'm homebrewing, I get stuck a little bit, I can break out the Curse of Strahd module and I can look in it for inspiration. So I, let's pretend I get stuck and I read about the werewolf den in there. Okay, that sounds good. I'll just make my own little adventure about a werewolf den that needs to be defeated. And then as I homebrew, I continue to steal ideas, perhaps from that module or other modules. Let's say that I need a deadly trap infested tomb. Well, let's look at the Tomb of Horrors or something from the Tomb of Annihilation. Do I need ideas for cultists? Well, let's take a look at Princes of the Apocalypse. Do I need a cold-themed adventure, Rhyme of the Frost Maiden? Don't forget to follow me over on Twitch where we talk D&D and you can ask me your specific D&D questions. Let me know down in the comments how you use pre-made modules in your homebrew games. Next week, I'll be going over how to create a homebrew D&D adventure. But until then, click right here to learn 12 tips for running a D&D module. And until next time, let's play D&D.